Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Sebney. Today we're going to do a quilting play-by-play -play for our latest finish, Burst Revisited. This is our latest Stashing with Stephanie pattern. What we did was we reimagined a block of the month that we did a very long time ago. The setting is the same. The block is a new variation of this sort of spiky bit. And it's all fat quarter friendly, which means it's a lot faster because we're only doing one block variation and all the pieces you're gonna cut the same from the same fat quarter. So it works out really beautifully. And this line was just fabulous to work with. This is Birdwatch by Bocaccini Meadows for uh, Figo Fabrics. Figo is the modern division of Northcott and they always come up with beautiful, beautiful offerings. Um, and this one is no different. So this month we got our shipment super, super late. We still have an international and domestic shipping crisis and we were a victim of that. So uh, I had no time to do the quilting on this one. So I did a wavy line, uh, both in the background and in the block itself, all in one thread. That way I could just do one pass all at a time and not have to worry about switching threads or rolling back or anything like that. And I think it turned out beautifully. It was really fun. It still allowed me to have a custom element. So we're gonna go over you're gonna see as I'm quilting and I'm gonna sort of describe what I'm doing. Also, just so you know, we've got um, a free motion quilting series that is starting and we are gonna be covering this stitch. We're gonna be covering a bunch of wavy line stitches actually, but specifically as block filler. In the video tutorial where we use it as block filler, we do more of a traditional block, but here's a good example of how you can adapt it to work for both your background and your piece area of your block. Um, so that way it just looks looks fantastic and fun and just looks absolutely fabulous. Real quick before we get into the play-by-play, -play, um, if somebody always comments on the video, the actual tutorial starts with whatever and if you wanna do that, go ahead and be snotty. But this is how we make our money. This is how we are able to bring you these free tutorials all the time, is we have this subscription club called Stashing with Stephanie. Um, our members got 10 fat quarters from this collection and there were 15 that we were in the total collection. Um, and so they got first dibs on getting additional fabric so they could get the five fat quarters they didn't get plus background and binding to turn their bundle into a quilt kit. And then they also could pick additional yardage if they had something else in mind or they wanted to make it bigger or backing, you know, whatever they wanted to do. They got first dibs on that. So a lot of it was gone before they got to it. They got the pattern for free and they also get an exclusive discount when they purchase additional fabrics. So it's a great deal. It's $29.99 a month plus shipping and fabric prices have already increased and they're going to increase more uh, this year just because of supply and demand and the need worldwide for more cotton fabric, more mass. Um, so prices are just going up. It's inflation. It is what it is. But that deal that you're getting, that $29.99 a month for 10 fat quarters, I mean, there are places in the country you're paying $4 for a fat quarter and you're going to get it for $2.99 plus shipping. So it's a great, great deal for you guys and it's going to keep getting better. Um, as those prices continue to rise, you get special discounts if you want to get additional fabric, a free pattern. I mean, there's not a better club out there. You got to check it out. Plus, you get access to all of our previous patterns and a special for free um, that we've done for Stash with Stephanie, which over a $200 value and a special discount on both of my fat quarter books. So lots of goodies. Check it out. Um, usually it's a mad dash to join this time of the month. If you join today, the day we are posting this video on January 31st, your first bundle will ship around the 20th of February. For, like if we don't have another shipping delay, hopefully we won't. I cannot handle three in a row. Um, but uh, if you order February 1st or sign up February 1st or later, you'll get access to your patterns right away. You'll get discounts on the fabric right away but uh, your first bundle will not ship until around the 20th of March. So just, every, I say that every month and every month I get angry emails from people who didn't listen or didn't read their email. So I'm just, I say it again, I make a big deal about it. Sign up by the end of January, your bundle should ship around the 20th of February. Sign up February 1st or later, you're looking at a March 20 shipment date. So, all right, with that out of the way, let's get into the play-by-play. All right, so this is the edge of the block. So basically the background sort of made another block, but the background, sometimes the block was not quite normal. Like in this case, the block was kind of, you just saw 
like these three bits hanging out. So what I did was I kind of quilted as though there would have been a block over there. And that allowed me to be able to sort of move around in there. Now I didn't do full on ruler work with this. I just used ruler work when I needed to move between blocks. So what I'm doing here is I'm using ruler work to go uh, through the stitches to get to the bottom corner of a block. That way I can start from here to do my wavy line out. Um, so now I'm just doing a wavy line so I can get out to my peak. And then I'm doing a wavy line back to that block corner. And I'm just gonna repeat this process doing a wavy line out to the point and then back to that center and just keep on going. And it is it is very, like, it's a simple stitch. It does not take a lot of effort. It doesn't take a lot of skill to master, um, but you really are just moving back and forth. So that way you can go from point to corner and it creates this really cool textured fan effect. I mean, you can really see it really well in the overhead camera of what that looks like. And it is just a really, really fun um, texture and stitch and with not a lot of effort and very easy to, to master. All right, so now it's time to travel again. In this case, I need to travel up to get to the next block corner. I'm looking for the corner where the nine patch is. That's where I'm traveling out. So we're almost there. And so this is just like really ruler work light. Uh, this is maybe a good way to start trying ruler work as a way to travel because otherwise you have to stop and start your stitches all the time and break your threads. And this allows you to do it less often. Um, there were some rows where I was able to go the entire way across without breaking um, thread. There were others where it was like maybe two or three times, but this just allows you to move around the quilt a little bit easier without having to worry about that so often. All right, so we're just bouncing back and forth. And there's no rhyme or reason to those waves. Um, I'm just kind of wiggling back and forth. I do not want it to be symmetrical um, to anything. I want it to look very nice and organic. Uh, because then there's like, you can't like mess it up. If you want them all to be the exact same um, and you don't have a computerized machine, that's never gonna happen. And so it's gonna look like you messed it up when you inevitably do. So I just like to just wiggle randomly out to that point and back again. All right, so at this point is one of those points where I cannot travel to the next stitch because it would look really weird if I traveled through the um, background, it would ruin the texture that we see in the background. So I had to stop and start and just move on to the next block. And we, I think, can maybe do a little bit of fast forward now through the rest of this pass. Um, in this case, I'm in my center at this point. I'm actually quilting this block right here. Um, so you're gonna see when I get to the center here, I don't have to travel at all. I can just go straight up to the next point and complete this block. <laughs> So we are wrapping up that final block. This is another instance where I really can't travel to the next part because I'd have to travel through background. So I broke my threads and started again in the next piece block. Um, for this quilt, uh, you can see that I've got my block here and then it kind of creates in the background a secondary block. Um, this is the center so they kind of meld into each other. But if I pull my quilt down here just a little bit, here you can see that the background, when you join your blocks together, sort of creates a secondary design. And so this is what you can sort of create when you are doing the quilting. And so, but it's not on the same plane. Like here is my block and then six inches up is this. So my long arm does not fit um, 18 inches. So what I had to do was once I finished one row, I could roll down a half and then I could quilt the background um, whatever would fit. So like in this pass, I would have done 
this entire section, then I would have gone through and done my center here and then this block and then whatever would fit on the sides as well. So it's a little bit of finagling to kind of figure out exactly how you're gonna work it, um, but it's not super challenging. All right, so here's where I'm quilting a piece like this. So I've started in the corner of the block that is kind of created when we put things together. So here's our block here. But when we put it next to our other three blocks, it creates the same shape as this, but in the background. So I wanted to quilt it the same. That way the texture would look the same from the back, which is really very fun. And so the process at this point is the same. Um, to me, it looked uh, less dense, uh, but really it isn't. It, it just looks it because you don't have all the piecing in the way. From the back, the texture looks the same and it really evenly distributes the quilting across the quilt, which is always a good thing. If you ever get your quilt judged, that's something that they're gonna look for and uh, score you on. And it just helps the batting and fabric wear more evenly as well too. All right, so here is where we get to do things a little bit different. So I'm traveling again, I'm using that ruler to travel to the tip of the next block. And I believe this is one where I've got a center that I'm gonna be going over. So we'll take a look. All right, so here what I did is I am going back and the rest of that block isn't there anymore. We're dealing with this section here where we only have like half of that block structure because of the way it's together. So what I've done is I've marked some little lines. So I've got a dash here and a dash here to indicate where my piecing would be. That way I have a good you know, line to follow so I can make sure that, okay, if my little square would have ended here, then I need to come up here. Then I'm able to travel down to my corner and then back up again using that center seam as my place to stop. So you can actually see that little hash mark. You can see a tiny little purple hash. Uh, there's two of them spaced evenly apart in that center seam. And I'm just trying to get in between there as if that were piecing. That way again from the back, it, it looks all the same. And I struggled. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with this. And then eventually I decided I'm just gonna treat it as though it's like a mirror image and it will be cool and it turned out turned out very cool. I was very pleased with how it all worked out. All right, so at this point you can't, well, I guess I, I did travel. I probably shouldn't have traveled, but you, you can. Looks like I did this time. I did not in other places, like I did not travel here. I just would stop and start. But now that allows me to finish the other half. So at this point, you're just gonna keep on going up from that corner to your point just like you've been doing. Uh, the only time you have to change it is when you have a design like this where it's technically set in the barn raising style where it sort of alternates um, where things go out. It's a common style for log cabins as well, common setting for that. And you just follow those little hash marks. I got one here and I got one here and I mark that with a friction gel pen so that'll go away with heat. It looks like I need to still do that on this quilt, um, but that's okay. But that's basically the process. And then when you need to, to move again to start your next section, you just travel to get down to the point of where the nine patches would be. Like this is where the nine patches would be if you were doing it as a piece block. And you can just follow around. And it creates this really awesome, cool texture to where it all is custom quilted. Each block is quilted on its own, um, but it is not, it's like custom light. It's not super challenging 
to the point where it's, it's going to take you a lot of time and it's going to be really challenging to do. It's a really simple stitch. You got your wavy line. You kind of have to learn how to work around the block. So sketching that out first is always a good thing on some scratch paper or a whiteboard. And especially when it comes to up here where you kind of have where our blocks kind of like meet, we're figuring out, okay, what am I going to do with this? Um, that took some thought and some working out for me on how I was going to make that work, but it absolutely works out just fine. And it's, uh, it turned out really, really cool. All right. Well, thank you for following along, uh, with me today and watching this cool team play by play with me. I hope it gives you some ideas on what you can do on your next quilt and how it shows you that you can really create something that is a really stunning design that's one, not going to take a lot of time, and two, is not going to be a very difficult uh, stitch to master. And again, make sure you check out that free motion quilting course that we have going on. Um, there are, we're going to be covering the wavy line stitch, so you're going to see lots of different ways to use it. I mean, the goal, we're basically covering four basic quilting stitches that I use all the time, and then we're showing you 18 variations on how to use them so you can customize them based on what you're doing in your particular quilt and what you think it is calling for to make that piecing pop. So you can check that out. The course is free. We are ordering more kits. You guys bought them much faster than I thought you would, so we've got to get some more in. So join the wait list so you know when those are coming and are available to you. Um, and then also check out Stash with Stephanie. It's a great way to build your stash. It's a great way to save on fabric, especially as prices are going up this year because of inflation and, you know, supply and demand and all those things that affect the prices that we pay for everything. And in this case, quilting cotton. So $29.99 a month gets you 10 fat quarters. It gets you first dibs and an exclusive discount if you want to get more fabric to do whatever you want or if you want to make that month's fabric or that month's quilt, we have something called the finishing kit, which gives you the five fat quarters you did not receive in your bundle plus background and binding. So you can turn your bundle into a full quilt kit. Um, that's another question I get a lot. People are like, what do you mean? I can't make a quilt from 10 fat quarters. I'm like, well, you, you can make a baby quilt from five fat or from 10 fat quarters. That, that, that's doable. We usually have multiple sizes in the pattern, so you, you can do that size. But if you want to make the lap size like we're doing, you do need to get a little bit extra fabric. But you're not obligated. It's totally optional. And then you get access to all of our other Stash with Stephanie patterns for free and immediately. That's a over $200 value. And you get special discounts on both of my Fat Quarter books. So great deal, great club to be a part of. We got a fun Facebook group where people are sharing the things they made. And it's really fun to see how everybody interprets things a little bit differently. Because a lot of times they'll like take that month's bundle and instead of making that quilt, they'll make another one that we have a pattern for that they were able to get for free. Or they're making stuff out of their stash. It's just really fun to watch and interact with everybody. So check that out. It's all over at shop.quiltanonymous.com. All right, and next up, we're actually gonna be starting our free motion quilting series with the actual quilting tutorials. So make sure you stay tuned and you're liked and subscribed and all those things, so that way you don't miss a single one of those videos. All right, until next time, happy quilting. Mm -hmm.